Hey there, thanks for tuning in to this webinar. My name's David and I'm a marketer at Zoho. I'm going to take you through how Zoho Desk can help you with service process automation. Let's start with the basics. First, we'll define what a process is. A process is a series of steps you need to take to complete a goal. Letting software handle a process reduces the risk of human error and gives you quick, consistent results. In Zoho Desk, there are two parts to process automation, capturing and organizing the necessary context, and using that context to better execute processes. Let's go through each one in detail. There are nuances of your business that only you understand well. Depending on what your organization does, you might choose to maintain a particular kind of customer information. So how does Zoho Desk help you bring vast amounts of customer context within the reach of your support team? Fields. Fields help you collect and store pieces of context, like customer information from your CRM, the issues that they need help with, as well as any follow-up tasks associated with these issues. Fields are elegant for businesses that are simple and that haven't reached a large scale yet. But what happens as you scale? You can run into problems as a result of too much context. As you grow, your company will create multiple departments, each requiring multiple fields. And some of those fields may be used commonly across the organization, but collect different information for each department. Let's illustrate this with an example. Consider an e-commerce company that sells a cell phone, a tablet, and a smartwatch. The company would have different customer-facing teams for order fulfillment, returns, and technical support. The support process in each of these departments is different. In the technical support department, the ticket status field can have common values like feature request, engineering fix, and software fix. In the returns department, the same field, ticket status, would take the custom values pickup scheduled, item received, and process payment, basically values that deal with the product return process. To top it all off, every ticket would also have to capture the product that the issue is about. So that's one complex scenario that can occur as you scale one common field across all departments with different values for each department. But there's another scenario that can occur as well. At a large scale, you might need dedicated departments to handle the technical support for every product. So you'd have three different departments, one each for the cell phone, tablet, and smartwatch products. In the case of a mobile phone, a detail like IMEI number might be relevant, while a detail like product code might be relevant for the smartwatch department. So how do you ensure that these details are captured for the appropriate departments? And how can your agents always have access to all the information they need to fully understand a problem? That's the second type of problem that can occur with scale. This is where layouts can help. Navigate to the product setup screen and go to the layouts option under the customize section. You'll see that there are five modules here. Tickets, contacts, accounts, contracts, tasks, and time entry. And for each of these modules, you use a different form to add a new ticket, contact, or task. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. You can change the department here, and the layout will change accordingly. In other words, for each department in your Zoho Desk account, you can have a dedicated form for each and every module. Let's take the Tickets module, for example. This is the existing layout of the form that this company, Zilker, uses to create a ticket. If you want to customize portions of this form, you can click on the Edit Layout button to open the Form Builder interface. Here, you can simply drag and drop fields. Now, let me demonstrate how layouts can help us solve the two complex scenarios that we just went through. Ticket status is a standard built-in field, so it's already available in this form. To customize the values for the ticket status field, click the settings icon and choose edit properties. In the panel that opens up from the right, you can add statuses or edit the ones that have already been added. So let's quickly add the options, pick up scheduled, items received, and process payment. Likewise, we can change the department to technical support and add the values feature request engineering fix, 
and software fix. When the customer goes to submit a ticket via your support portal, they will see these options in the form based on the department that they chose. This way, Layouts makes it possible for each department and brand to manage its own support process without much effort. Now to the second scenario. How do you have different fields in each department? Identifying and capturing as much information as possible helps your team deliver better service. Layouts make that a lot easier. Let's go back to the form builder. Now let's change the department to this one, a dedicated department for technical support that deals only with the mobile phone. If we want to add an IMEI number here, just drag and drop this single line field into the canvas. All you have to do is give it a label, set the field length, choose if you want it to be mandatory, and set the visibility so your customers can see it in your help center. If this field is something that only an agent must see, then you can choose not to show it in the help center. Click add and your field will appear on the form. You can also reorder the fields if you want to. This way, for every department here, you can add just the fields that matter to that process so your agents will always have access to all the information they need to fully understand a problem because you're capturing more accurate context. Now, let me take a second to highlight why this context is really, really important. According to a survey conducted by the Global CX Wake Up Call report, 31% of respondents said that the employee they spoke to wasn't empowered to help. That's a startling percentage and shows how a lack of context can hit your customer service hard. Now that we've seen how to capture and organize information in Zoho Desk, let's move to the next step, using all this context in your processes. Some good examples might be hiring, onboarding a new employee, IT service management, where employees get in touch with IT admins for software installations and device requests, or the travel desk, through which employees can book tickets for their business trips. You'll notice that all of these are internal processes. They involve people and teams from within your company. The other type is, of course, external processes, like customer service. Whether they're internal or external, Zoho Desk lets you capture your real-world processes and map them into your support platform. Blueprint lets you do all that. Let's consider another example. A customer is facing an issue with their phone and sends in a ticket. This lands in the dedicated department for mobile phone technical support. The support agent sees the ticket and realizes that it needs the engineering team's help, so he assigns the ticket to somebody from that team. An engineer estimates the amount of time it will take to fix th this issue and passes the ticket back to the support team to communicate with the customer. Once that's done, the ticket is then moved to the engineering team to start work on the problem. Once they're done from their side, they inform the support team who contacts the customer for a confirmation before closing the ticket. So that's the entire flow. Now let's see how Blueprints lets you reconstruct this process in Zoho Desk. To access this feature, just head to the Automate section in the Setup screen. Give the Blueprint a suitable name and description. You can also choose the criteria that will trigger this Blueprint. In this case, we want the Blueprint to execute whenever a ticket is in the Open status. OK, so we have an empty canvas here. Now let's try creating a blueprint for the process we just outlined. As the name suggests, blueprints will let you create visual pathways for the flow of your data to different stakeholders who are involved in the process. Every blueprint has two basic entities, states and transitions. States are stages in a process, and transitions are actions that lead from one stage to the next. Every ticket begins in the default state. Generally, this is the open state. At this stage, if the agent notice that this ticket deals with a technical issue, it needs to be assigned to someone from the engineering team, who in turn will give an estimate on the effort and time it will take to fix this issue. So we need a state called engineering estimate. Since it's not available here, we can simply create one by clicking add state. First, give this state a name. Notice that this state in the blueprint is mapped to the open ticket status. What this means is that when the ticket is in this state, it will still be counted as an open ticket. It has to undergo a transition to move to the next state in the process. Now, drag and drop this new state onto the canvas, connect these two, and you have a transition here. After the engineering team provides the estimate, the support agents can inform the customer about the amount of time it will take for them to fix this issue. 
So we need another state called inform the customer. Once the support agent has informed the customer about the timelines, the engineering team can work on this ticket. So we'll need to create a state for that as well. Let's call it engineering WIP, or work in progress. Once the issue gets fixed, the ticket goes back to the agent, who can now update the customer and wait for a confirmation. Once the customer confirms that the issue has been fixed on their side, the agent can go ahead and close the ticket. So we get a closed state in the end. Now that we have all the states here, let's define all the transitions. Let's give the first transition a clear name and description. A transition has three parts, before, during, and after. Before is the section where you can define who can perform the transition action and what criteria have to be satisfied before the action is available. During is the section where you can mandate the set of actions to be performed in the transition. These could be actions like updating the value of a field, adding a comment to a ticket, or sending a response on a ticket. The transition will be completed only if the person performs all of the specified actions. We can set the mandatory action as a private comment so the agent can tag the engineer. After is the section where you can define the follow-up items for that transition. Some examples for this are updating a record in another piece of software or sending an acknowledgement email to a customer. Let's create a task that will be assigned to the engineer so they can calculate the effort needed to fix this issue. We also want the ownership of the ticket to change as well, so we can choose this new option in the field update section and set the ticket ownership to James Carter, the engineer. Once this transition has been performed, the ticket will move to the next state, engineering estimate. Once the engineer is done creating an effort estimate, he can transition the ticket to the next state. Now let's name the second transition, Estimate Calculated. And choose the engineer, James Carter, as the transition owner. In the During section, we'll make it mandatory for James to fill in this Effort Estimate field with this Validate option. In the after section, we'll set an automated alert to be sent to the agents, letting them know that an estimate has been created. We'll also set a field update so that the ticket ownership switches back to the agent. So now the ticket reaches next state. Let's define the next transition. How about we name this one Customer Informed? In the During section, the mandated action can be Reply. Basically, you want the agent to get back to the customer, letting them know how long it will take to fix the issue. In the After section, we can again set up an alert instructing the engineer to proceed with the fix. Like the last transition, we'll change the ticket ownership back to the engineer with a field update. From here, the ticket moves to the next state, Engineering WIP. Once the engineer's work is done, he can perform the next transition. Let's give this transition the name Issue Fixed. The owner will be the engineer, but how does the agent get to know that the engineer fixed the issue? The comment option in the During section solves this problem. We can make comment a mandatory action for the engineer to perform this transition. That way, he can tag the agent while adding a private comment. And in the after section, we can send an alert to the agent 
and switch the ownership back to them. Once the engineer performs this transition, the ticket moves to the waiting for confirmation state. This is where the agent will update the customer and ask for a confirmation. So we can name this transition customer email. And then set support agents as the owners for this transition. In the during phase, we'll set the action as reply because we want the agent to email the customer, letting them know the issue has been fixed. We can skip the after section here since we don't have anything to perform. This means the ticket ownership still stays with the agent. Now, the ticket reaches the customer sign off state. At this stage, the agent waits for a confirmation from the customer. When he receives one, he can go ahead and close the ticket. So we can name this transition Close Ticket. The owners for this transition are obviously the support agents. In the after phase, we can set an alert to be sent to the engineer to notify him about the ticket closure as well. So finally, the ticket reaches the close state. The only thing left to do is save the blueprint. Now let's watch this blueprint in action. Head to the home screen where you'll see this icon, indicating that a blueprint has been applied to this ticket. Let's go ahead and open up the ticket. If you've used Zoho Desk before, the first thing you'll notice when you open up the ticket is a blue panel at the bottom of the ticket screen. This is where agents can see the set of actions that a blueprint lets them perform. In this case, the agent can transition the ticket state to engineering estimate by clicking here. This immediately pulls up a panel that shows the actions the agent must take to make the transition happen. Now, to jog your memory, let me quickly show you what we set as the mandatory action during this transition. This is the box where the agent can add a private comment. Let's tag someone from the engineering team here. Once you click Complete Transition, the ticket state changes to Engineering Estimate. Once the engineer logs into this ticket after reading the comment, he will see this panel at the bottom of the ticket screen. Once he's done estimating the effort needed to fix the issue, he can click Estimate Calculated. Again, he will have to perform the action mandated in the blueprint to make this transition happen. In this case, he has to update the estimate field. Once he's done that, he can complete the transition which will move the ticket back to the support team. Notice how the ticket moves between teams, pushing the process forward. Once the bug has been fixed and the customer has sent a confirmation, the agent can close the ticket. Blueprint makes process management easier and more efficient. The process that we just covered involves three stakeholders, the customer, the agent team, and the engineering team. But Blueprint can also be used for automating complex processes like this one. So that sums up Blueprint, a visual process automation tool built right into Desk. Before we end this session, here's a major announcement from our side. We're opening up Zoho Desk as a platform. What this means for you is a lot more functionality. Until now, our internal product team developed all the features for Zoho Desk. With the launch of the marketplace, we're throwing the doors open for developers across the globe. And the best part is that everybody wins in this game. As a product, we'll be able to expand our feature set with the help of outside developers. The developers, of course, stand to benefit because they'll get paid for what they build. Desk users will get the benefit of that work because it will make the product even more powerful than it already is at no extra cost. To start, we've earmarked certain areas for developers to write extensions. Let me open up the ticket screen to show you some of the areas that developers can add their widgets. The first area is in the top band, which houses different modules such as tickets and contacts. Users can click on this icon to pull up the list of additional options. Third-party extensions can be added here. Let's select an extension to see how it looks. Notice how it fills the entire screen, allowing you to get a clear picture of what's going on. The next area where you can access extensions is the bottom band. See this icon? This appears when you install an extension. Click on the icon to see the widget pop up. Actions that an agent can perform independently of the ticket they're working on can be stored here. This may include something like your chat add-on or telephony interface. Specific actions that apply for each ticket can be found in the unified ticket screen itself. Here, you'll find the marketplace housed inside this menu. The list of extensions you've installed opens up. You'll also see the marketplace icon to the right of the unified ticket screen. Click here to see a list of your available widgets. 
The other location where you'll be able to access widgets is the sub-tab section. What you see here, conversation, resolution, history, are all sub-tabs. Whenever you install extensions, they'll get added to this list. But how do you install all of these extensions in the first place? For that, you need to head to the setup screen where you can select Marketplace from the Others section. Here, you'll see the full list of available extensions. We plan to announce Marketplace for developers later this year. When we do that, there's going to be plenty of extensions for you to install and use on the go. To sum up, Marketplace offers a range of benefits to desk users. First, it offers new functionality in Zoho Desk. You can extend Zoho Desk by adding an inventory lookup for returns or a calculator app. Second, it integrates with your favorite applications. If there's a product that you need to integrate with, you don't have to wait for us to release the integrations. If it's a well-known app, chances are you'll find it in the marketplace. Third, it offers better product customizations. Extensions let you customize Desk with features tailored to your business, such as bringing your tasks list inside the ticket screen. Fourth, it makes vertical-based solutions possible for your industry. We plan to eventually have developers build powerful extensions to provide a ready layer of functionality and customization for individual industries and verticals. So yeah, that's Marketplace. So we've covered a host of features and benefits in this session. Let's do a quick recap of what we've seen so far. We started with a basic definition of a process. And we split process automation into two steps. The first being capturing and organizing context, and the second using this context to better execute processes. We then looked at how layouts helps you define custom support process and also helps you capture accurate context. There were two scenarios that we covered here. The first scenario was when a single field occurs in multiple departments, but the values for the field change based on the department. The second scenario was when each department has unique fields that are required to complete the work. We then looked at the components of a blueprint, like states and transitions, and also tried creating a complete blueprint from scratch. We then tried running our blueprint to see how it functions from the user's point of view. Thanks for joining for this session. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Go ahead and give these features a spin. I'm sure you'll find them useful. And most importantly, if you have any questions when setting up a feature, feel free to get in touch with us at support at Thank you and have a great day.